Alright, so today I am going to actually defend an SJW viewpoint. Uh, I think I need to shower again. Okay, this one is actually very important because the idea of toxic masculinity is constantly being skewed by who else? The SJW community. So let's get right into this. Okay, there have been articles coming out being like, oh, masculinity is bad because of this, 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 and this. And the anti-SJW community, like myself, have actually been getting offended by this. But here's the thing. You are being offended by a skewed version of what they're actually trying to say. So a document came out by the APA, okay, that's the American uh, Psychological Association. And in this document, they're basically describing why, um, you know, masculinity in and of itself can be toxic to men. Okay, by pointing things out such as like, you know, men have a four times higher suicide rate than women. Just in general, how men are more oppressed than women are in the first world, because we are. You know, like suicide rates, you know, deaths at work, stress. Um, as men, we're kind of like, in society, we're kind of like forced to suppress stress. We're not allowed to show our tears. We're not allowed to ask for help or else we're seen as weak or crybabies, whatever. Uh, you know, uh, men dropping out of school, just a lot of bad things for men, uh, fatherless homes, etc. And that's what, the, that's what the document actually talks about. So you might be wondering, based on that, why are people offended? It's because it's been skewed. You see, here's what happened. They released this document, then the SJW movement came out, and with their normal bullshit went, Yeah, see? We were right! It is wrong to be a man! Fuck you, men! You better, uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna delete all of your testosterone. It's time for you to become women. And then the anti-SJWs anti got offended on that because they got a skewed version of the report by the APA. But that's not what they were trying to say. They're not trying to say what SJWs are saying, which is that just being manly is toxic. What they're saying is that some typical things that men go through, some of the oppressions that we face, the hardships that we as men face can be toxic to us as men, and the APA wanted to offer some help on how to fix that. Here is um, a, a little thing I wanted to read. This emphasizes on understanding the issues men face comes at a crucial time. According to Ryan McDermott, a, a psychologist who helped the APA craft its new standards, although people of all genders face no shortage of obstacles in America, men are struggling, he says. The, the recession has hit men harder than women. Men are less likely to graduate from college. Men are more likely to commit suicide than women, among many other things. To help patients, the guidelines assert, psychologists need to understand what's making their lives untenable. For a lot of men, it might be the harsh cultural expectations that can come along with manhood itself. And this is completely true. Whenever we talk about how men face more oppression than women, we're always going on about how we have certain things harder. The truth is, men do want um, emotional support because of us, you know, also being domestic abuse victims. Women initiate 70% of all domestic abuse, okay? Men don't like not being allowed to cry. Men don't like not being allowed to express themselves, okay? Men don't like always wanting to compete in putting up a tough front. We're human beings just like women are, okay? Any anti-SJW will say, will believe this or think this or even say it, but they won't necessarily process it and admit to it because they feel like they're letting the SJW culture win, but that's not the case. The SJW culture is that masculinity is toxic. I'm not saying that it's toxic to just be a man. What I'm saying is that the things that men face, the oppression we face, and the fact that we're not allowed to express emotion, we have to bottle everything up, is toxic. It is genuinely unhealthy to suppress emotion. That's a fact. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. The idea of suppressing emotion and stress 
is actually physically and mentally unhealthy. That's, that's just a fact. And men don't like it. But because we're so against the SJW movement and the way that they skewed the APA article, we're going, oh no, it, it's fine to be a man. Fuck you, SJWs. But you need to understand it's been skewed, and I'm going to get into it more. How about how we as men are not allowed to hit women back? The idea is, oh, you can never hit a woman. Women are weak and fragile. No. The, the reality is, for the sake of egalitarianism, if a woman hits you, you most certainly have the right to defend yourself and hit her back. But here's the thing. Years ago, in the 60s and long before even that, Men were never allowed to hit women, ever, no matter what. And that was kind of just the standard for being men. It wasn't even like an oppression thing. It was more just the fact that it wasn't right to do so. And it was just a regular standard for men. You cannot hit women, period, no matter what they do. But the thing is, though, if you're going to complain about all the double standards that men face because of all of the legal male oppression, then you can't complain about not being able to hit women back. Just like SJWs, you can't go on both sides and still complain. You either complain about how we're not allowed to hit women and say that you want to change some things in masculinity or say that you don't want to change masculinity at all but you can't hit women because that was the standard before and it has been throughout history but here's the thing don't get me wrong we do live in a generation of emotionally broken crybabies who get offended and hurt at every corner with everything they say people now who will scream if they get the wrong flavor of ice cream or speak to another person who dares even challenge their opinion because they don't have the emotional and mental stability to debate over a conversation these people could never have the capacity to handle actual hardships or trauma these are the sjw's which come in both male female, and mentally deficient people. This is where I draw the line. There's a big difference between the SJW cucks who, you know, cry at every corner and the toxic men, okay? They are not the same thing. If you are a man who says, I want to be able to express myself emotionally, it does not automatically make you an SJW cuck or a crybaby. There's a difference between there. You can you can be a man and have testosterone, but still want to cuddle with your girlfriend or cry or talk about the stress in your day. It's not one or the other. You can do both without being an SJW yourself. The real problem are the SJWs who don't want to change masculinity to help men. That's what the APA wants. What SJWs want is to delete testosterone, okay? And that's a problem. It's those people who can't handle life. SJWs are generally people who are extremely overprivileged people who had mommy and daddy pay their way for university and have never had a hardship once in their entire lives and could never handle reality and thus strive to change reality as a result. As a man, you are allowed to have hardships and work your way through them and maybe even be stressed during it and you may even fucking cry and you're allowed to express that without an SJW now saying oh see masculinity is bad or some bullshit like that I've already discussed what is wrong with these people in my video what is truly wrong with SJWs however there's a difference between being emotionally incontinent and showing any emotion at all there's nothing wrong with showing some emotion for the sake of being a human being something that men in general are not allowed to do but we must understand the balance most men on the anti-sjw side merely want the same rights as women where we can express our emotions or show a tear once in a while without being laughed at just like women but that doesn't mean we want to completely remove testosterone from the body and call everything male as toxic masculinity not to mention that sjw's want masculinity to be considered a mental illness as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to this, both the SJWs and the anti-SJWs are wrong. And the reason you're wrong is because you have been told what the APA really wants by a skewed version of what SJWs want. Before, typical maleness refers to holding in your tears, acting tough, being physically strong, etc. However, many men now are actually saying they're sick of that. 
The reality is, most men don't want to be this way. Considering that many on the anti-SJW side are saying that constantly holding in tears and never showing emotion actually stresses them, which is true for most people. And say that, like women, we should be allowed to express ourselves too. And I totally agree with that. However, if you're going to say that you want equality and to be able to express yourself emotionally without being laughed at, then why the fuck are you getting mad at the SJW articles like this one? Take a look at this article here. College promotes men's cuddle group to redefine masculinity. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this article is perfect. In fact, I think it's fucking stupid. I don't think we need a cuddle group. And I also don't think we need to redefine masculinity. See, that's where the SJWs come in by skewing everything, and that's what's making the anti-SJWs angry. The APA does not want to redefine it. That's what SJWs want. The APA wants to help masculinity. They want to help men through the problems that we face every day where we're not allowed to express ourselves without women or other men laughing at us for doing so and then calling us women because we express ourselves. But you shouldn't be angry at an article like this. Sure, point out, point out that, this, that this article is skewed and is just some SJW garbage, but don't be angry about it. Here's a little bit of a newsflash for everybody. Men do like to cuddle. What a fucking shock. Men enjoy cuddling with their girlfriends or whatever. It's okay, you can admit it. You don't need to constantly be the tough guy because I don't need it. Women, men do enjoy cuddling with women. Like we do, like the, the, you, this is not something to hide. Men do enjoy it. And hey, if there are some men out there who are just very stressed with life and have faced actual hardships, I'm not talking about first world problem bullshit. Oh, my phone's battery is low. I mean actual hardships. If somebody in your family has died, or something like that, something very difficult, your pet has died, and you want a hug, that's okay. It's perfectly fine to cry about a dead pet or a loved one and need a hug as a result. And if this college wants to promote some cuddling group, and if you're single and you just want to cuddle with somebody, then fucking go ahead. But yes, there is a fine line between saying, yeah, I want to cuddle because sometimes I can be emotional and I want those needs to be helped. Everybody has emotions, even the most manly man in the world. And it's perfectly fine to want to cuddle. But the fine line is, is drawn if we're talking about SJW scum who are going, I had such a hard day. I lost my toothbrush. Please, I need a hug and I need to cuddle now and I need to go in my safe space and crawl up in a corner in the fetal position. That's different. We're talking about actual hardships. Or if you're single and somebody has like severe loneliness and depression, that's okay too. Men are allowed to get depression. The American Psychological Association claims that suppressing emotions and, and masking distress, which was once considered a coping mechanism, is now considered toxic masculinity. Now, this is wrong on both sides. From the SJW side, because it is not toxic masculinity to suppress emotions, but it is toxic in general. It's toxic because this is not a healthy coping mechanism. In fact, anyone with half a brain knows that one of the biggest stressors in the world is to suppress and bottle up your emotions, no matter who you are. We got the anti-SJWs claiming that they want to be able to express and talk about their emotions just like women, but then two seconds later saying, let me be a man and suppress everything. Guys, which is it? Choose one. Well, since both sides of this are wrong on the extreme, allow me to be neutral and use rare sense. I don't call it common sense because it's not common. <laughs> it's good to have a balance. Be a man. Don't flood your feelings and complain about first world problems like SJWs do. And don't tolerate SJW phrases like toxic masculinity. But also support the idea that men do have the right to express themselves and talk about their stresses just like women can. The APA also claims that men suppressing emotions leads to more risk-taking, aggression, and competitiveness. And apparently the anti-SJWs are angry about this comment. Again, both sides, while I do agree that aggression or competitiveness is good, like while playing a sport, for example, you need that drive to win. The APA is also right, to an extent, 
because men don't always want to be pushed to compete with everyone. Sometimes men find this to be extremely stressful and need a breather. And this isn't just low testosterone left wing cuck men feeling. I'm talking about all men. No matter how tough you are, men. If you're angry about the APA saying this, then it is you who is fueling the idea that men are never allowed to cry, show emotion, talk about stress, nothing. And that is unhealthy. Now, none of this, however, means that SJWs are not disgusting people. They have, in the past, pushed men to cry and express themselves in order to challenge gender norms. However, this only led to the SJWs laughing in the faces of men and calling them weak after doing so. So when it all comes down to it, men should be able to express themselves, but SJWs don't really want this. They just want to laugh in the face at any possibility of gender equality. And it's with that, we realize the real reason why men bottle up their emotions, so that they don't have to deal with this double standard bullshit. And that's the moral of this whole thing, is that if men understand everything I'm saying here, but still bottle everything up out of what I would call at this point, fear. Then I completely agree and I completely understand it. Do you really think that I want to express myself if I'm going to be laughed at? It's just like when men attempt to make a rape accusation. Remember, if a woman makes a rape accusation, she's automatically believed without any proof at all, and it's the man's job to prove that he didn't do it. But if a man dares to say that my girlfriend abused me or raped me, he is laughed at just for making that accusation. And therefore, men don't make rape accusations because they're afraid of being shut down. And the exact same thing happens in the dating world. Many men don't even want to fucking date anymore because they're just afraid of crazy women or feminists or being rejected. And the exact same thing applies here. If I dare or any man dares to, sh to cry, it's not that he doesn't want to express himself. It's that he's afraid of being laughed at by the feminists. So he just doesn't do it. That's the real problem here. And lastly, I want to point out something very important. If SJWs are going to complain about men and male behavior being toxic, we should also focus on toxic femininity, which is far more toxic than any male behavior. Multiple studies and surveys have proven that the majority of aggression between sexes, whether it be female to male, male to male, male to female, or female to female, actually found that women are the most aggressive to other women. This was proven when surveying how jealous women get over other women in terms of relationships, fashion, appearance, job status, etc. We have seen so many cases of the real toxic being women being toxic towards other women, being competitive to appearance, trying to get that other girl's man or something like that. Many people, there have actually been studies proven that the majority of like fights at a job, like women who work at like office buildings, they actually did a study and found that the majority of people who, you know, were like pushing lies or, or gossip or trying to like push someone else out of a job, it wasn't men. It was actually women doing it to other women. So if you're going to talk about some bullshit like toxic masculinity, you better look within and look at toxic femininity. But the moral of this whole thing is that toxic masculinity doesn't fucking exist. Sometimes masculine behavior can be toxic, but not to the feminists or to the SJWs, but to ourselves. Men put standards on themselves because of history and because of the way feminists behave, the way SJWs behave, and the expectations that we have on ourselves, like we're never allowed to show a tear, these are expectations that are on men. Whether if you put them on yourself, because that's, how you, because that's how you were raised, or because somebody else put it on you, it's wrong. Everybody has the right to express themselves and show emotion, even men. And that's the reality of this whole thing.